welcome back to the next session we are now again going back to the map of india and as i mentioned you have to give district as a layer and then go to making your query and this time we will go to house listing data and look at availability of source of light if you look at source of lighting let us see what information sensors gives it gives us electricity kerosene as a source of lighting solar energy could be a source of lighting there are other oils oils other than kerosene traditionally in the rural areas these are used any other source but you may also have houses where there is no lighting but between themselves electricity and kerosene take it from me they account for almost 99 plus percentage of all our lighting needs so let us first check up what is the scenario when it comes to electricity and do we have household do we have districts where electricity is available to more than so let us ask which are the districts where electricity is available to more than uh, say 60% population okay so i find out go to 60% and check what's up right so a good number of houses have electricity let us go a little adventurous and go to 85 and then you suddenly see that the number dwindles okay so let's go back to our 60 percent and be happy that a fairly large number of uh, the country has uh, districts with more than 60% households which are having electricity now let us go to urban area so we are going to urban area and ask ourselves houses which are having so in urban area let us be little more ambitious and ask ourselves houses which were districts where more than 85% houses are having electricity you get a fairly neat picture okay you can also be a little more ambitious and say okay let us say 88% houses right now you see this export the advantage of this export is when you say export it takes all that data to another spreadsheet so you don't have to worry about where do you save the data where do you copy it from so you must learn to export all your data so let's come back to this map but then let us ask ourselves urban india is fine what happens to rural india so we go to electricity rural and try to ask that same cut off 85% now you suddenly see your south indian states and up over in in the north punjab haryana himachal uttarakhand they are much more um, fortunate than their other counterparts let us lower down our bar and say 80% you suddenly start finding this you ask yourself okay let us go to 70% okay now if electricity is not available and kerosene is really the savior as far as the children are concerned who study in school i don't know how many of you have studied in kerosene lamp i have done it in my childhood so let us go for kerosene rural and ask ourselves which are the districts where more than 50% households 
are using kerosene as their source of yeah you get that same belt which you had seen which in where the electricity was not available what is the importance of this and let me narrate to you my con conversation with secretary petroleum government of india i used to be secretary in the ministry of uh, uh, new and renewable energy sources that time so secretary mnre so i showed him this and i said ki sir juta yahan chupta hai the shoe pinches here but our csr efforts are focused over here ointment yahan lagta hai so his first reaction was who gave you this data tumko data kisne diya now i always caution all my students that whenever they are doing this mapping they should always take someone else's data so that you can always say independent source public domain idam namam so petroleum secretary asked me ki acha ye public domain mein data hai so my people should be knowing about it i said well i don't know about that but this is a public domain data acha tumko kisne map bana ke diya so i took offense i said nahi nahi map maine khud banaya so oh, you made the maps now that question had two meanings one is are you underemployed ki ab tum apna time inhi cheezon mein barbaad karte ho and second was of course are you able to are you capable of making such maps but then to be fair he did take a initiative of telling the oil companies that look at this data and try to make your efforts so that uh, you know your csr money can be meaningfully spent in this area for uh, providing solar light or any other source of lighting okay now let us go back to our favorite figure in population on literacy rate now when you look at literacy rate you have urban area you have rural area so let me ask let us go to rural because obviously rural area illiteracy will be more so i go to persons rural and i ask myself or let us say let us first go to total and just say which are the districts in india where the literacy rate is less than 66% so two thirds we are looking you get a kind of a clusters you know where the literacy is less than 66% but if you ask that same question and say what happens to rural areas then it becomes interesting in the rural areas i go to less than 66% i ask myself tell me the districts and this is the kind of picture that come it gives you obviously it means that in urban areas if you look at less than 66% you should not get much areas but before going into urban let us look at the male and the female okay so then i am asking acha theek hai ye batao rural male ka kya scene hai so i go to rural male and i say less than 66% this area will shrink definitely but just see how it shrinks hardly any but if you ask what happens to rural females and ask the same question less than 66% what do you see a huge area this shows you the gender gap in literacy rate or if you please it shows you the picture of gender inequality okay let us ask what happens to urban areas yahi sawal puchhte hain so we go to urban and we say urban females less than 66% kahan pe you go to less than 
66 percent and ask ourselves hardly any places. So, urban women are much better off than rural women and if you ask urban men. So, let us take as a curiosity urban females 80 percent be very optimistic of kahan hai, kaun se jile hai, where literacy rate is less than 80 percent for urban women. You again get that same pattern which means even though you raise the bar between rural and urban the relative inequality remains stubbornly in the same place. Let us see what happens to men. So, let us go to rural urban men okay. and again ask at urban men less than 80 percent just to see what happens between urban men and urban women and you find hardly is an area where urban male literacy is low. And if you go to let us say for the fun of it let us go to 89 percent then you get area clusters which are similar. The two three points that are coming out of it a that inequality has different facets it can be fairly stubborn it occurs in clusters it can be stubborn it persists, it can be across various fault lines in the society, the rural, urban, the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, non SCST, women, men and these inequalities compound. So, let us take a look at this pattern of inequality, I will just take tell you, take you to a interesting slide which will dwell little more on inequalities. Let us go to, so the points that I am making over here is that data shows you whether the shoe pinches, maps so show you where does the shoe pinch. We have seen fault lines of inequality which is they are sh they sharpen across different fault line. It can be urban rural, it can be male female, it can be SCST and non SCST and it could even be among the people who are disabled and non disabled we are not taking it up here. Extent of inequality can be measured by its scale and the spread. The burden of inequality we will quite often realize that uh, same area does not contribute uniformly different areas do not contribute uniformly to inequality. Some areas contribute a lot more and some areas contribute less. The other thing which we have seen that even if you raise the bar the relative inequality remains fairly stubbornly in its place. So, let us take a look at that. I am showing you 2011 literacy. So, you see the extent the, the spread you have Bihar at one end and you have Kerala at the other end. As I had showed you literacy at the national level similarly if you let us say take a state like Orissa you suddenly find there is this cluster of low literacy there is this cluster of uh, low literacy here, these are the places where the, there is a cluster which is more than 77 percent men are educated. Okay. When I said about the extent of inequality, now let us look at this diagram. So, we have taken Kerala literacy which is over here, we have taken Bihar literacy over here. Now, you should be able to do this kind of normal distribution diagrams, you can use Minitab or any other package. I had shown you how to export the data to a spreadsheet, take that spreadsheet, take the data to Minitab and draw curves like this. What I am drawing your attention to is the best case scenario in Bihar over here is lesser than the worst case scenario in Kerala over here. And you will also notice that in Kerala the spread is fairly compact in Bihar the spread is fairly large. Okay. Now, this is total persons. What happens if you look at the male literacy and the female literacy? Just watch out here we are going at this end which is 
something like 36 percent, here it is 84 percent. Let us look at what happens when we look at female literacy. I just toggle it couple of times, look at this and look at this. This end has gone all the way to 25. But what you realize is the separation. Now, the best case scenario in Bihar and the worst case scenario in Kerala, the gap has just increased and this tells you the combination of inequality. So, not only there is this inequality in literacy, the inequality by gender gets exacerbated. Let us take the other look, burden of illiteracy. Now, if you look at the census data, it also gives you number of illiterates. And if you look here, UP, Maharashtra, Bihar, Andhra and MP between themselves account for 50 percent of the burden of illiteracy. They do not necessarily account for 50 percent of the population, whereas you have much smaller states where very little burden of illiteracy. So, what you should realize is that even a 10 percent reduction in Mizoram will not achieve as much as maybe a 2 percent reduction in illiterate people's number in UP. So, you should always keep this mind that we should talk of percentage and we should also talk of the absolute burden. I will come to rural female literacy rate where I was talking of the persistence of inequality. If you look at 2001 census, put a 50 percent cutoff, you find areas where there is lit high literacy. Go to 2011, raise it to 65 percent you will get the same areas which are more literate, same areas which are less literate. So, unless you go out of your way and make these things achieve literacy faster, the asking run rate will always keep uh, persist. I will also show you at the state level, here we were seeing it at the national level, even at the state level, look at Orissa more than 45 percent, this was a belt where more literate uh, rural females were there. Come 2011, the bar has gone up from 45 percent to 61 percent, but the area is more or less the same. Okay? Now, your exercise will be take individual states, maybe take Karnataka, take uh, Rajasthan, take Andhra or whatever and then try to do the same kind of thing to locate the seats of uh, illiteracy in relatively speaking. If you remember that map earlier where we had looked at total male literacy, this cutoff was 77 percent, I have got the same cutoff at 56 percent, but the relative illiteracy, the seat uh, of that is basically similar. Okay? So, I will, the other thing when I showed you the Kerala and uh, Bihar diagram, within a state also there could be a difficulty. Now, this is a diagram of West Bengal, this is on 2001 census data. This was rural female literacy among the general castes. See how it goes to the left. This is the rural female literacy among the scheduled castes and this is the rural female literacy among the scheduled tribes. And I had made, made this presentation in Calcutta and I had said that 25 years of pro poor rhetoric notwithstanding, we have not paid attention to tribal female illiteracy. So, I will rest it at here and then we will go to our next session where we will look at some other patterns of inequality.